Everybody loves a good story about a con man who impersonates his way into a position he is in no way qualified for. It's the story of every job interview I've ever had. I think these stories are so interesting because they tickle the part of our brain that wants to know two things. How did this person manage to finesse their way into this situation? And what happened when they inevitably had to do the job they were only pretending they could do? The answer to the first question is usually that the person is charismatic, quick thinking and able to talk their way in or out of anything. The answer to the second question is usually that they do just that, talk their way out of it. Well today I'm going to tell you a story about a con man who got caught in a situation there was absolutely no way out of. No amount of silver tongued talking was going to save this guy. And to make matters worse, he was impersonating a surgeon. Ferdinand DeMara was born in 1921 in Massachusetts, USA. His family was initially well off but came into financial hardship during the Great Depression. At the age of 16, DeMara ran away from home. When his parents found him, he had joined up with an order of monks. Realising he was safe and expecting him to quickly tire of the monk lifestyle and return home, his parents just left him to it. I think if I had a family member disappear to join a fringe religious group, the last thought in my head would be, oh yeah, I'm going to be seeing him again real soon. And sure enough, Ferdinand's parents were wrong and he stayed with the monks for a couple of years, gaining his hood and habit. By then the monks had come to the conclusion that Ferdinand de Mara was not a good fit for the order and they forced him out. This did not deter Damara, and instead of returning home, he drifted around trying to join various other orders. Finding little success, he joined the army in 1941 at the age of 19. He tried to live a life of quiet peace, but the bastards wouldn't let him, so he joined the military instead. Ah, you're doing God's work either way, right? Well, it turned out life in the army was not as enjoyable as Damara had taught, so he went AWOL. Instead, he joined up with the Navy. He'd think he'd probably want to stay away from the military on account of being on the run from them, but Damara was using false identities. He wanted to become a corpsman and passed basic medical training, but lacked the education to progress. To overcome this, he falsified his qualifications. Unfortunately for Damara, it was quickly discovered his documents weren't real, and so he faked his death and fled again. Damara took with him the identity of Navy officer Dr. Robert Linton French, who was a psychologist. Using Dr. French's details, Damara became a college teacher for several years, until in 1945, the authorities caught up with him and he was prosecuted for desertion. Keep in mind, this was at the end of World War II, not exactly the most convenient time to be caught for desertion. Damara was sentenced to six years, but was released after 18 months due to good behaviour. He then created a new identity, Cecil Haman, and enrolled in university to become a lawyer. He quickly got sick of this, though, and just forged a PhD. He was now... Dr. Cecil Haman and became a teacher at a Christian college. He was supposedly instrumental in the college's conversion into a state chartered university in Maine. This university is still in operation to this day. However, Damara was unhappy that he had not received a prominent role in the university and left. This was not before stealing someone else's identity, however. Canadian doctor Joseph Sear was planning to set up a medical practice in the US when he met Damara, or sorry, Dr. Cecil Haman. Seeing as Haman was a lawyer, he offered to help Sear with the paperwork. He then made copies of all his personal documents. Now posing as Dr. Joseph Sear, Damara got commissioned as a Surgeon Lieutenant in the Royal Canadian Navy. Having only basic medical training, Damara was clever in how he went about his work. He approached another doctor on board, claiming that he had been talking to men who worked in lumber yards in remote parts of Canada, who often didn't have quick access to medical care and would greatly appreciate a guide that briefly explained medical treatments in layman's terms. A sort of medicine for dummies booklet. The doctor was happy to help. Of course, this story had been entirely fabricated and his guide was only used by Damara to learn a little about the new world he was in. In 1951, he was transferred to surgery on the HMCS Keuga, a destroyer stationed off the coast of Korea. Yes, he was being sent off to the Korean War. While here, he let his attendant handle all the issues on the ship, which were all minor. That was until one fateful day patrolling along the coast. 
The Cayuga had stumbled across a handful of South Korean combat casualties, some of whom were in pretty rough shape. As the ship's only surgeon, Damara was faced with an unthinkable scenario. He was going to have to perform surgery, and he was going to have to do it right this very moment. So what did he do? Well, he didn't have a choice. He did the fucking surgery. So what happened? Well, it turned out he actually did a great fucking job and every treatment was a success, one of which was the extraction of a bullet in chest surgery. His work was so impressive he was recommended for a commendation and the story was reported in the press. That means he did such a good job that even for a surgeon it was applaudable. And he wasn't a surgeon, he was just a guy. He had gained all this knowledge while on the job. But in an ironic twist, Damara's success was also his downfall. The real Dr. Sear had come across his story in the news. It must have come as quite the shock to realise you worked your ass off all your life only for the crowning achievement to your name to be earned by someone else who wasn't even qualified. I probably would have just ended it all at that point. Dr. Sear informed the authorities of the imposter. When the Canadian Navy found out, they quietly dismissed Damara and sent him back to the US. They would have pressed charges, but, well, if the sole surgical authority on your Navy destroyer is just a random guy, whose fault is that? It was an embarrassment for the Canadian Navy, and they would have preferred no one know about it. That was a shame, because Damara then sold his story to Life magazine in 1952. With his newfound fame, Ferdinand Damara was forced to work under his real name and took on a number of short-term jobs. Damara was unhappy with this reality, however. The reason he had taken on so many identities that had seemingly nothing to do with each other was because Damara just wanted to be someone, whether it be a priest, a lawyer, or a surgeon. He enjoyed the prestige. Unfortunately, outside of being an imposter, Ferdinand Damara was a nobody. His real life became depressing for him, and he developed a drinking problem. Eventually, it became too much to bear, and in 1955, he disappeared again. The man who would reappear was Ben Jones, a guard at Huntsville Prison in Texas. He was put in charge of the maximum security wing until a prisoner recognised him from the Life magazine. Damara went on the run but was caught shortly after and served a six month prison sentence. After this, Damara returned to the church and became a pastor under his own name. He worked with various hospitals as a chaplain or counsellor, jobs in which he was very well liked and appreciated. He had finally found fulfilment in reality. In 1982, Ferdinand Damara died at age 60 of heart failure. And that's the story. Well, not all of it. This guy was a fairly prolific imposter. There's some frauds he did that I didn't even touch on. But if you want to hear more about con artists, I have another video about a man who became a football star without actually playing football. A woman who founded a fake car company and ran off with the money. A man who impersonated missing children. And many, many more videos. And if you wouldn't mind seeing my content again in the future, why not subscribe? Thanks. Your own name. Because, of course, I'm not uh, academically qualified, Groucho. I never finished high school. Mm. <laughs> you became a college dean and you never graduated from high school. Huh? <laughs> I know our educational system has some holes in it, but I've never realized these holes were as big as the Grand Canyon.